Hello guys, we are going to learn how to use UART. The first step is polling mode. I have selected the default settings for my board. So, my UART was active. Let's see the configuration. The most important thing is the baud rate. This means how many bits can be transmitted in one second. 115,200 is very popular. You can find it in many devices. The next item is word length, which means how many data bits are transmitted in one frame. Also you can set the parity. The last one is stop bit, you can select one or two. Keep other configurations as default. Config your project's path and select compiler and press the generate button. Open main.c and start writing code. I want to print a message every 100 milliseconds. I define a pointer and fill it with my message. Now, after a delay, I write the transfer function. The first entry is my UART handle. The second is my pointer, the third is the length of the data to send, the last one is the timeout, which means the maximum time this function will wait for the transfer to send the data. strlen returns the length of our string. To use the strlen function, we need to add string.h. To remove the compiler warning, we should use a different data type. As you can see, I have changed our data type to match the input of the function. Now, we want to see the result. In my case, my UART is connected to the STLINK programmer and I can open a serial terminal on my PC. Now you can see the message. It was a simple transfer function. Next, we need to receive the data from the PC and store it in a variable. Create an array and write the receive function. The second parameter is where the received data is stored, and the third parameter is the maximum amount of data the function can get before a timeout. Now I send the characters to my board with my computer. As you can see my data buffer shows the characters it received. Data is successfully received. There is a big problem when you want to receive unknown byte length. We can use another function, that calls receive to idle. This function needs another variable to return the number of received bytes. There are three conditions to return the response from this function. To return OK, the received length must be reached to the maximum length of the data or idle line, and to return error reached to the timeout. I use a variable to indicate the number of received packets. As you can see, our counter increment after receiving a packet. Sending and receiving this way is not efficient, because your CPU always waiting for transmit and receive data, so I don't recommend using polling mode. In next lesson, we will learn how to use interrupt. If you found my video helpful, please subscribe my channel and like my video. Thanks.